Hiya, Martin here. Thank you for joining me once again for today's video. Before I get going, I do need to say a huge thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my, to my channel recently and or left comments um, on one of the videos, um, particularly Turner's Journey uh, and also over on the website to do with the giveaway that I'm running for my new um, wood finish called Hampshire Sheen. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much and your support is amazing. So. Thank you. Now, today's video is about sanding. Now, I'm not a huge fan of power sanding, although I will, if I'm really, really busy, I will resort to power sanding um, purely because it is quicker. But most of the time, I prefer using a bowl sander, such as this one. Um, I find using a bowl sander more satisfying really um, it kind of leaves me thinking yes this is, this item has been properly properly handmade rather than using a, um, a drill um, a drill or a, um, a, a power sanding method even though the wood is turning on an electric lathe there's something in my head that says finished hand finished with a bolt sander like this so we're going to have a look today at how I turn a piece of American oak like this into a pretty little bowl like this that's been sanded down to 400 grit and then finished with um, my Hampshire Sheen uh, oil and wax combination. And here it is. I've got three of these pots to give away and you can take a peek at that on the website. Um, but yeah, there it is. Hampshire Sheen. Right, so without further ado, and this is not a sales video by the way, so I do hope you don't think it is, um, it's literally just an instructional video how to sand and then finish with the product. Ah. Um, yeah, so here it is, um, how to sand with a bowl sander and finish up to a lovely lustrous sheen like this. Catch you soon, bye for now. So today um, I'm going to turn this uh, little piece of American oak um, and finish it with my New Hampshire Sheen Wax, but um, it's quite thin, it's only about uh, an inch and a half I suppose, um, and I'm going to turn it on a worm screw, but as you can see, it, when I put the blank up to, um, up to the actual screw itself, um, it doesn't leave me much um, room to play at the bottom for a recess um, to put in the bottom for when I reverse it in the chuck. So how can I get round that? Well I'm going to use um, a couple of um, uh, pieces of sycamore uh, which work out to be about half an inch so I'll screw those onto the worm screw first like so to act as a spacer so when I put the blank onto the worm screw I've got much more space here as you can see much more space here um, to put a recess and also because the piece isn't very big um, it doesn't matter that I haven't got the full depth of the worm screw um, going into the wood to keep it secure it's fairly small so the risk of it coming off is pretty pretty slim so now all I need to do I found the center of the piece I just need to drill it and get it onto the worm screw and I need to find out how deep I need to drill the hole in the blank. So as you have this much of your um, worm screw poking out, I can put the drill bit up against there like so and just add a little bit of tape onto the drill bit. So when I drill the blank, I just go down until the tape touches the wood and then I know I've got the right depth to... Um, the, the right depth hole in the blank to screw onto the worm screw. And then with the blank mounted onto the worm screw I can now go ahead and turn the shallow dish that this is going to be. Uh, I will come back when it is time to sand the outside of, uh, of this piece um, and explain how I go about sanding with a bolt sander. 
and with the bowl turned down to the shape that you want, um, you now need to start sanding it. And I use um, this deluxe bowl sander. Um, there are other ones um, available, of course. Um, you can also get them with um, long wooden handles, but I, I prefer the shorter, chunkier um, stainless steel stainless steel ones. Um, and it spins um, with the piece. Now you can't just grab the bowl sander and stick it on the wood. Um, there's there's a good angle um, to get the bowl and to get the sander turning nice and fast um, to create a nice finish on on your piece and it all depends on how you stand and address and, pre and present the tool to the wood much like turning itself um, and, I, and I find an angle of about somewhere between 40 and 60 degrees good. You don't want to get the top like this because it can cat sometimes it can catch and if there's a little splinter there it can pull the pad off um, it, it can pull the, the sanding disc off um, and damage the damage the actual sanding pad itself. Um, this is quite an old pad but I prefer using this um, this pad over um, a, a new one because it is it is softer. Um, it's softer and gets into and get gets into curves um, a bit easier. So let's start the lathe, um, and I'll talk you through how how I approach um, sanding a bowl like this. You don't want the lathe too fast. Um, this is going 750 RPM, something like that. And then somewhere between 45 and 60 degrees, just put the pad onto the wood and let it find a place where it starts spinning. So it's about there. Again, I'm not letting the top of the, the pad touch the wood. It, it's cutting down, it's sanding down here. So it's on the side. Obviously with a bigger piece, um, with more surface area on the side, you can play around a little bit more, and then it's just a case of running the running the pad along the wood, listening to it cut. You can hear a good cut. See, that's not cutting very well, but then you tilt it down, and you can hear the, the tone of the wood change. You can also use the bowl sander in the opposite orientation, so you approach, rather than cutting like this, you can turn it round and cut into the curve like so. And again the same principle applies, if you hold it up like this you'll get a fairly fine cut, but you open up the angle between the pad and the wood and you get a much coarser get a much coarser cut which can be very useful for, for getting um, little fluffies out the way um, on the end grain. So there basically what all the wood is doing is spinning is spinning the pad but if you open up that angle it gets a nice cut and you can hear it. Can you hear the can you hear the sound of the that the wood's making as it goes across the grid on the paper. And then when you think you've done enough, stop the lathe and go over the piece carefully, looking in all the grain areas for any, um, any remaining tool marks or any fluffies or anything like that. See I've got a tool mark here that hasn't come out just yet and the same on the same here. So I need to keep going um, with this one before I start doing the bottom. Now I don't think you can see this particularly well but one thing you can do is where you've got a tool mark or some fluffies you can put a pencil mark where those where those lines are that you need to sand down to and they will serve as a reference. So when you're 
spinning the word. You can keep sounding until those pencil marks disappear and then you know that those tool marks have gone. Like so. I can't see any, um, any pencil marks there at all. So here's the bottom of the piece. Um, there's a pretty small foot and also as you can see the recess is, um, is, is pretty shallow. Um, I, I always turn rightly or wrongly, some people may completely disagree, um, with the shallowest um, recess possible. Um, I've put my mark in the bottom um, as I showed in, um, in the coloured cherry bowl um, a few weeks ago. I've put my mark in the bottom um, but that just needs sanding back um, a little bit. And when you're doing the bottom you need to be careful, because these pads are flexible, um, you need to be careful to hold the pad squarely onto the foot or where, you sl where you've slightly undercut the foot you need to make sure that you get the pad nice and smoothly on there otherwise you end up with a round and also when doing the inside I always try and tuck as much of the pad underneath the dovetail um, as possible but underneath here doesn't need doing a huge amount and same again um, as before, try and keep this part, this transition from foot to wall as sharp as possible or as clean as possible um, until later on in the sanding process when you can just knock that edge off just a little bit with a 240 pad or a 400 pad and the same with the transition from the foot to the recess. So with the pad absolutely square on to the slight undercut of the foot I'm just taking that back very slowly making sure that this transition here remains sharp and I'm looking straight down on top of the piece so I'm happy with that now, I think. I'm happy with that now. And now to do the inside. Tuck the edge of the pad right into the recess and find an angle where it, where it spins. There we go. And then you need to repeat the process right the way through your grits until you get to 400. There. That's the end of the 400 grit, and I'm pretty happy with how that has um, how that's come out. Now, before we apply the sanding sealer, what I like to do is clean out the pores of uh, clean out the pores of the piece, um, not just with a paper towel, but with a with a quick squirt of denatured alcohol or methylated spirits as it's known here in the UK. So I've got a little squirty bottle with some of that in. And that just helps clean out the dust and stuff. There's, there's not an awful lot of dust, but... There. That's good. Let that dry for a few seconds. And then I use a, a cellulose sanding sealer, a cellulose sanding sealer and thinners mix that was recommended by Mr. Mike Walt. Um, I think it's 6040. Um, you need to double check with Mike on that. I can't remember. Um, so with the lathe running fairly slowly, I apply a single coat. And now the sanding sealer has dried, I need to cut it back with some very fine wire wool. And then I give it a little clean with some paper towel just to make sure just to make sure that there's no um, um, wire residue left in any of the grain or anything like that. 
do a final check to make sure that my sanding has been absolutely spot on and then take my pot of Hampshire Sheen um, this pot's actually going to be given away there we go, there it is it's a blend of Danish oil, canuba and microcrystalline waxes now with any finish I've noticed if your paper towel has a design on like this don't get the finish or don't get your finishing product on here um, because there's a danger that the dye in, in the design will come out onto your piece so always use a white piece of paper towel get yourself a little bit of Hampshire sheen onto your paper towel like so and then with the lathe running as slow as you can or fairly slow this lathe only goes down to 500 just apply it nice and evenly across the surface like so making sure that there are no circles running around it like that until the until the paper gets a gets a shine on itself then you can speed the lathe up when it's dry and then just give it a light buffing with a different part of the paper towel or if you like a fresh piece of paper towel and that's it so here's the finish on the outside of the bowl now you can leave it for 20 minutes or so to uh, to harden if you like or you can just take it straight off the lathe um, flip it round and do the inside of the bowl which is what I'm going to do right now So here's the inside of the bowl done now. I've sanded it down already to um, 80 or 100 grit. Um, and I've got a 120 um, on here now. And when you sand the inside of a bowl, it's important that you keep the head of your bowl sander moving. Because if you keep it too long in one place, you can get a flat spot. And then the transition from the, from the wall to the bottom of the piece um, could develop a could develop a lip rather than a nice smooth curve which is what you're looking for and I find polishing bowls polishing on the opposite side to where you're standing to be better than trying to try to sand over here so from the opposite side you're standing I find I've got a little bit more control and just below center as well so the center line is about here and I'm polish and I'm sanding just below the center line Now when it comes to sanding the lip, just the same as when you were sanding the foot of the bowl, hold, I've got a slight undercut down here so it's slightly angled into the bowl. Just find, just find the angle, make sure that it's flush, and I find that just giving it, giving the, the sander a little wobble over there produces a nice surface and leaves, the, leaves this piece here, the transition from the lip to the wall nice and defined and also the edge and this is sanding right across the center line and you can tell you've got a nice um, an, a nice flat surface there because you get a line of sawdust or a line of dust just on the inside and a line of dust around the rim too. Now, <clears throat> sand it down to 400 and um, 400. The transition from the wall to the lip of the piece is uh, is good. Um, I'm happy with the angle, but the bowl itself looks a little bit boring. Um, so I'm going to take my best friend, 
my blowtorch um, and just burn just burn the angle between the, the rim and the wall here um, to create hopefully a little f black line on the actual corner itself that then fades out a little bit towards the, the very edge of the rim and also a little bit down into the bowl too. And then with one hand turn the spindle and then with the other hand kind of wave the um, wave the flame over the rim. If you go too hot, the wood will split. If you don't go hot enough, you won't get a fine line. That is about all I want to do on that. That looks nice. Right. And then a single coat of sanding sealer and thinners. And then when it's dry, rub it back again with the very fine wire wool. You can probably see where I... Where I heated the wood, it's, it's warped a little bit. With walls this thin, I mean these walls are pretty thin, there's not much you can do about that. That's good. And then you can get the finish onto a clean piece of towel, remembering to keep the design away from away from the finish and the wood. So that's all you need. Really there's not a lot there. Blade running slowly. Rub it in one smooth movement from the inside to the outside, all the outside to the inside of each other. Give it a little bit of a rub. Find a clean piece of towel. Crank the lathe up. And there we are. There's um, the bowl with a the inside of the bowl with a Hampshire sheet finish. And here it is, the finished bowl. It was a joy to turn um, and this is uh, kind of the second or third um, sort of test piece I've put, uh, I've turned with the Hampshire sheet finish on and uh, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with it indeed. Um, even if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, thank you very much indeed for watching. If you have any questions or comments then please do leave them below. I will always try and get back to you if I possibly can. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. Um, I post at least one video a week, um, either a finishing stroke turning video like this one, or um, Turner's Journey, which is um, a series of videos I'm putting together that follows, follows the course of me going from being a novice turner to a full-time turner. Um, yeah, here is the, here is the bowl again. Uh, if you fan if you are a UK turner and you fancy and you fancy winning one of these pots of uh, Hampshire Sheen, I have three to give away um, this week um, in Turner's Journey, which is the fourth of September. Then head on over to the website at msavensmith.com and look for the Hampshire Sheen recent post. Leave a comment as to why you think you should receive um, a pot of uh, Hampshire Sheen. And I will choose the winners on Friday and let everybody know um, in Turner's journey. So once again, thanks for watching. Here's the bowl and I look forward to seeing you on Friday for Turner's journey. Bye for now.